always wear black? I am in mourning for my life. Well, that's depressing. I'm unhappy. Why? You're young, healthy, and so beautiful. Your father manages the estate of a famous actress. My life is much harder, but I don't wear black. You wear brown. Besides, happiness doesn't depend on money. Poor people are often happy. Are they? My mother, two sisters, little brother and I all live on my school teacher salary. 23 rubles a month. We have to eat. You need tea and sugar, right? Tobacco. Well, for my mother. The play will start soon. Yes. Nina's acting in Constantine's play. They've fallen in love. Their two souls will unite through the art of theater. But there's no art to unite our souls. I love you. I tramp here every day, six miles, and am greeted with indifference. Well, I can't blame you. Why marry a man who can barely feed himself? I'm touched by your affection. I just can't return it. Snuff? No, thank you. So humid. There'll be a storm tonight. All you do is moon about and talk about money. To you, poverty is the greatest tragedy. I'd be a beggar in rags if I could only. Never mind. Now that you are done with school, Constantine, I have someone to talk to. <laughs> Funny, despite my infirmities, I'm closer in age to you than the celebrated actress, my older sister. Well, don't remind her of that, Aunt Petra. <laughs> I'll call you when the play begins. Friends, please. Everything's ready. Oh, that's right, thanks. <laughs> Masha. That dog howled all night. I can sleep through anything, but my sister was up for hours. Ask your father to leave it unchained. You won't listen to me. Speak to him yourself. Come on, let's go. You'll let us know when the play begins? Yes. That dog will howl again tonight. This has always been the oddest place. Irina sweeps in when the theater season's over, guests in tow. Rest of the year, just me with my books and medicines, while Shamriyev, Paulina, and Masha parade around like they own the place. Now this is theater, back to its origins. No artificial scenery. The backdrop, the lake. Naturalism will begin when the moon appears on the horizon. Oh, that's good. Of course, the whole effect will be ruined if Nina is late. Where is she? Her father and stepmother stand guard like Cossacks. It's like breaking out of prison. Uh, mm. Are you all right, Aunt? Oh, just this stupid leg, the tragedy of my existence. It always appears as if I were drunk. Women pity me, men back away in fear. Ooh. Why is my sister so irritable today? She's not acting this evening. Nina is. So she's decided she's holding that against me. And she's decided she hates the play without ever having read it. Well, did you let anyone read it? That's not the point. Nina is, she's just jealous because Nina is going to get a little attention on a little stage. Let's conduct a psychological analysis. Dazzling on stage, my mother can cry at will or make an audience double over in laughter with a raised eyebrow. In real life, uh, yes, she's capable of charming anyone. She can nurse the sick like an angel. But if anybody praises Bernhard or Duza, no! She alone can play Camille. She alone must be gushed over and written about. But she can't act during the summer, so she creates drama around her. Just watch. And she's stingy. I know for a fact she has 70,000 rubles in a bank in Odessa. But you'll burst into tears if you beg her for a kopeck. Your mother adores you, Constantine. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not, not, not. What my mother loves is being in love. 
and wearing nice clothes and having people listen to her and applaud. Plus, I'm almost 23, a living reminder she's not an ingenue. When I'm away, she can be 32. I show up and she's forced to be 43. She knows, too, that I despise her theater. She thinks she's serving humanity with her sacred art, but it's just a vehicle for commercial vanity, smug middle-class prejudices, contrived plots, sentimental endings, and pandering moralism. I run from it as de Maupassant ran from the Eiffel Tower in fear that its vulgarity would crush him. This psychological analysis is more about you, dear nephew. No, it's about theater, art, life. Not the same people doing the same shows for the same audiences. Open the doors, new stories, new characters, new artists. Otherwise, we don't deserve theater. Deserve theater. I love my mother. I really do. But she leads a stupid life. She chases fame as she chases young men. Constantine. Well, it's true. What could be more humiliating than having to make conversation with Boris Trigorin? I'm a non-entity in her entourage. They endure me because I'm her son. On my own, I'm nothing. What is this Trigorin like? He's been so silent. He's polite, a little wistful. His stories, they're... Ah. Charming, skillful, polished. But after Tolstoy and Ibsen, Trigorin seems nice. <laughs> I passionately desire two things, to marry and to become an author. I have succeeded in neither. It must be pleasant to be an insignificant author and interesting even to be insignificantly married. She's coming. The sound of her footsteps is music to me. I can't live without her. My enchantress, my dream. Am I late? Oh, I hope I'm not late. No, 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 no. Oh, I've been out of my mind all day. I was so afraid my father would find out, but they just went out driving, so I made a <sighs> for it. Oh, the sky is so clear, the moon is rising. I'm so glad to see you. Oh, my darling, have you been crying? It's nothing, nothing. Um, when do we begin? I can't stay long. Then we better get ready. I'll get everyone. <laughs> Once, when I sang that, my voice teacher said, well, that was shrill, yet piercing. <laughs> my sister got all the talents, yeah. <laughs> I'm forbidden to come here. My parents call it Bohemia. They're afraid I'll become an actress, but oh, this lake calls me like a seagull. Oh, Constantine, my heart is so full. We're alone. Isn't that someone over there? No, that's a tree. Why does it look so dark? It's evening, everything looks dark. Please don't leave early this evening. I must. What if I follow you? I'll look up from your window. What light through yonder window breaks? The dog would bark and the watchman would chase you away. I love you. Oh, Constantine. The moon is on the horizon. Time for theater. Places. Places. Good. Sulfur for when the red eyes glow. Are you nervous? Very. But not about your mother, but Trigorin. He's so famous. Is he young? Yes. What beautiful stories he writes. Really? I haven't read him much. Your play is hard to act. There aren't any characters in it. Life must be presented powerfully, not as it is, but as it appears in dreams and not much plot. It reads more like a recitation. I think all plays should have a love story. It'll get damp. Go back 
and get your galoshes. I'm fine, Paulina. So obstinate. Mm. You never take care of yourself, and you're a doctor. You like to see me suffer, that's what it is. You sat out on the terrace all evening yesterday on purpose. Oh, tell me not that youth is wasted. You were so enchanted by Madame Arcadna that you didn't even notice the cold. Confess, you admire her. I am a country doctor, getting on in years. Nonsense. You've kept your looks magnificently. Women still admire you. What? <laughs> and you can all grovel before a famous actress, all of you. Once more I bow to thee. So what? We need artists as heroes and heroines. Ideals inspire us. When women throw themselves at you, is that idealism? I'm not an artist. And I've always behaved honorably towards women. If they like me, it's probably because I'm the only doctor in town. Dearest. <laughs> now, now, Paulina, they're coming. The aroma of my boudoir is a wash in lilac. She acted most beautifully during the fall season in Kiev in 1873. Oh, please, ancient history. Oh, I remember. Your Camille outstripped them all. That was the first time I played. Of course, I haven't seen Bernhard, but I'm told that in the second I action, wonder when the play will start. I detest a late person. Uh, the theater is not what it was. Where are the sturdy oaks of the stage? Only stumps are left. Oh, we're not trees. True, only a few dazzling geniuses remain. Ah, too kind, dear Dr. Dorn. On the other hand, the average acting is much higher. Average! I cannot concur. I've taken in so much more. When will the play begin, my dear son? In a moment. Patience. My son, thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their tint. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the play is about to commence. Oh, ye ancient mists that hover over this lake at nightfall. Blind you our eyes and show us visions that shall exist in twice 10,000 years. Anything in twice 10,000 years. <laughs> Reveal the gaping void of nothingness. Oh dear. All humans, all beasts, lions and eagles, quails and noble bucks, geese and spiders, silent fish beneath the roiling waves, and creatures invisible to the eye. In a word, life, all, all life has withered away. A thousand years have passed since Earth last bore a living creature. And the unhappy moon lights her lamp in solitude. No longer do the cries of storks arise from the marshes or the drones of beetles in the lime trees. All is cold, 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 void, 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 terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> Life has been extinguished into eternal matter stones and water and clouds, but the energy has flowed into that great world soul. I, 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 in me, the spirit of Alexander the Great, the spirit of Napoleon, of Caesar, of Shakespeare, and of the tiniest leeches that swim in me. The mind of humankind has fused with the instinct of animals, and all life lives on in me, me, me. What is this, this, this? Me. Sorry. Alas, I am alone. Once in a hundred years, my lips open and my voice echoes mournfully across the desert earth. One moonlight over the waters, you hear me not. You are engorged by the putrid mud and glisten over the lake, cold and empty. For Satan, jailer of temporal matter, trembles lest the spark of life should glow once more. 
He has ordered the unceasing movement of atoms that compose you, and so you shift and change forever. I, the lifelight of the universe, I stand alone, a captive in a dungeon deep. One thing holds true in my eternal battle with Satan. I am destined to be victorious. Atoms of matter and atoms of spirit shall fuse into a glorious harmony and the living reign of freedom shall return. But until that long awaited hour, Oh, horror, horror, horror! Satan, mighty foe, advances. I see his dreadful, lurid eyes. Now stop the special effect, please. Satan longs for battle. Put your hat on, you'll catch a cold. The doctor docks his hat to Satan, spinning atom of temporal matter. <laughs> That's enough. Here ends the performance. Why? What are you so angry about? Excuse me, I forgot that ever a select few were ever allowed to write or act. I, I, I have infringed upon the monopoly. I, I, I. What was that all about? Well, it, his first play. What did I say? You hurt his feelings. He told me this was ironic, an experiment, so I treated it like a joke, a parody of the avant-garde. We hope to please you. Now it appears he has burned the masterpiece. Theater mustn't amuse, no, it must lecture and then fumigate us with sulfur. I'm tired of this indulgence, forcing decadent trash on an unsuspecting public. That's the new theater, the new art. Thank you, no. Everybody must write as he feels, as best he can. <laughs> then let him write as he feels, but if this is the best he can. Thou art angry, magnificent muse. What? I'm not angry. I'm only sorry to see him wasting his time. I, I didn't mean to upset him. Anyway, can one separate life from matter? I mean, the spirit may well exist in the union of atoms, but in my teaching, Trigorin, you should write a play about a schoolmaster. It's a hard life. I don't write plays. Oh, let's not talk about plays or atoms. Such a lovely evening. Listen, music, friends, so healing. They're all the way across the lake. Long ago, we had music on this lake almost every night. Mm -hmm. There were six houses, music and laughter and romance, such romance. In those days, the young idol was this man here, Dr. Dorn. He's fascinating now, but then he was irresistible. Oh, my conscience torments me. Why did I hurt my poor boy? Why? Constantine! Shall I go find him? Please, dear. Constantine! Constantine! I suppose the play won't be finished, so... Oh, wonderful, Nina! You were thrilling, really. I've seen many debuts, but this one... Bravo! Bravo! We were charmed. With your looks and lovely voice, it's a crime to hide away in the country. Share your talent. It's your duty to go on the stage, your duty. It is the dream of my life, but it will never come true. Why not? It could. My dear, let me present to you Boris Trigorin. Hello. Uh, all of your books. I've read them. They're... Oh. oh. Don't be afraid of him, dear. He's a simple, good-natured soul who hasn't let celebrity go to his head. <laughs> See? He's blushing. It's an unusual play. Very. I'm not sure I understood it at all, but I watched with the greatest pleasure because you acted with such sincerity. And the setting was beautiful. I wonder if there are a lot of fish in this lake. Yes, bursting with fish. I love fishing. Just sitting on a dock in the evening waiting for that first bite. Heaven. How can 
fishing compared to the joy of creating a new masterpiece. <laughs> oh, well, uh, oh, I, oh, <laughs> dear, you see? Oh, I, he always gets flustered when people say nice things to him. It's adorable. I remember once the famous Silva sang at the old opera house in Moscow. Oh, thrilling when he hit the low C. Well, imagine the astonishment when one of our own choir members sitting up in the balcony boomed out. Bravo, Silva. A whole octave lower. <laughs> the audience was speechless. <laughs> The angel of silence is flying over us. Constantine! You! Constantine! I must go. Goodbye. So early? I won't allow it. They'll be waiting for me. Oh, then I suppose we must release you. <laughs> you knew how hard it is to leave. Oh, stay another hour. Live recklessly. <laughs> no, no. I can't. Oh. Unlucky girl. They say her father left the immense fortune entirely. They say her mother left the immense fortune entirely to her father. And now the child is penniless because the father already built everything away to his second wife. Pitiful. Yes, her papa is a perfect oak. Come. <laughs> Let's go in. My leg is aching. It's the night dampness. You can't escape it. Yes. Some pity for my baby sister. Come, Miss Invalid. <laughs> Permit me, my dear. That dog is howling again. Please unchain it, Shamraya. Unwise. The granary is full, and thieves could break in if the dog wasn't there. <laughs> yes, a whole octave lower. Bravo, Silva. <laughs> and he wasn't a professional, just a choir member. Do choir members get paid? I may have lost my wits, but I liked that play. It was different. I've studied energy and atoms before. When Nina spoke of her solitude and the devil's eyes gleamed across the lake, I felt the hair on my arms stand up. It was so fresh and original. <laughs> uh, oh, here he comes. <laughs> Mosh has been calling for me all over the estate. Insufferable! Oh, sorry. I'll go find her. Everyone gone? I'm here. Constantine, your play was very strange. Oh? No, I mean, I'd never seen anything like that, and we didn't get to see the last half, so perhaps it's foolish of me to say anything, but it moved me deeply. You have a great deal of talent. Continue writing. <laughs> oh. oh my, you're crying. Um, well, as, as I was saying, uh, you chose a uh, lofty theme and uh, life beyond time and place and presented it uh, abstractly. Am I saying that right? Do you think I should write more? Yes. Use your talent to express deep, eternal truths. Oh, I lead a quiet, contented life, but if I had ever created something like that from my imagination, I would soar above the earth. <laughs> yes. Where is Nina? One thing, every work of art should have a definite goal. Know why you're writing. Without a clear purpose, you'll lose your audience. Where's Nina? She's gone home. <laughs> gone home? I need to see her. I have to see her or I'll die. My dear boy, calm down. Never! I must find her. Your mother wants you, Constantine. She's very anxious. Tell her to leave me alone and stop hounding me! No, no, my boy, don't act like that. So unkind. You're right. Masha, I'm so stupid. Thank you, doctor. And goodbye.
Uh, youth. <laughs> youth. People don't know what to say. They always exclaim, youth, youth. Don't do that. Snuff. It's disgusting. Ah, Petra is playing. Let's go in. <laughs> Wait a moment. What is it? I should talk to someone. I can't talk to my parents, but for some reason, maybe you'd understand. Help me. Help me before I do something foolish. Masha, what is it? I'm in torment. No one, no one knows the agony I'm going through. I love, love, love Constantine. <laughs> oh dear. What is it about this place, this magical lake? Oh, tell me what I can do. Oh, there, there. Oh, oh my. I'm almost twice your age. Tell me, Doctor, which of us looks younger? You, of course. You see? Now why is that? Because I work. My heart and mind are doing what I love, whereas you remain idle. Embrace life. Theater teaches me to exist in the present and never dwell on the past or worry about the future, so I never age. I feel as if I had been in the world twice 10,000 years. My life trails behind me like an unraveling scarf. Some days I don't care if I live or not. But then I shake it off and stare reality in the face. Many a heart is a... Grooming is important too. Keep yourself as correct as an English lady. I love planning exactly what I'll wear for each occasion, and I never leave the house without every hair and face. Posture too. I never slump as some women do. See? Like a 15-year-old girl. <sighs> Enchanting. Now, shall we continue reading? I believe we were at the farmer and the rats. The farmer and the rats. Yes, go on. Me. No, give me the book. My turn to read. Ah. And the rats. Ah, here it is. Meanwhile, it is as dangerous to attract and indulge authors as it is for farmers to allow rats into granaries. Yet when a woman has found an artist for her own, she lays siege by charming and flattering him. <laughs> Ridiculous. Maybe in France, but Russian women are luring subjects to be charmed and flattered by an author, as in Trigorin and me. So, we are happy today. Yes, Father. Let mother depart to visit relatives. Three days of liberty. Yes, I belong to you now. You know, radiant today. It's the dress, delightful. But too much praise will go to your head. Where's Trigorin? Fishing on the dock. Ugh, again? How boring. What are you reading? Oh, on the Water by De Maupassant, but it's neither true nor interesting. We'll get something better in town today. I'm uneasy about my son. Tell me, what is the matter with Constantine? He's changed, spends all his time on the lake or in the woods. We scarcely see him. His heart is heavy. Recite something from his play. Oh, really? Are you sure? When he recites, beautiful and sad. His eyes shine and his lips tremble. He's a born poet. Uh, sweet dreams. Petra, are you asleep? Yes, just resting my eyes. The sun. You don't do anything for your health, sister, but you really ought to. Like sleep? We all ought to be doing something for our health. Drink chamomile tea. A nice day at a restful watering place. Mm -hmm. On what many? Hmm. 
Besides, I'm by the water now. You're just being contrary. Everybody ought to give up smoking. They'll just drink more. Uh, not necessarily. Tobacco destroys your insides, while alcohol destroys your personality. A couple of glasses and you become a different person. You can hardly recognize yourself or, or how you're behaving. It's easy for you to condemn smoking and drinking. You've tasted life and are satisfied. But what about me? I haven't tasted life. I haven't had a single experience. Here, here. You men have license to go anywhere and do anything. Me? Well, we women must wait to be invited, don't we? <laughs> well, some of us have had plenty of experiences. Still, you must accept your life contentedly and not live in regret. <laughs> it's indulgent. It's lunchtime. Oh! My foot fell asleep. A couple of vodkas before lunch. The poor soul is heart sick. Oh, she needs to set her sights on a different granary. <laughs> <laughs> what? You talk like a man who has long been the object of adoration. Always the pursued, never the what? Pursuee? Is that a word? Oh, this dear, predictable country life. <sighs> the air is warm and heavy and filled with philosophy and bickering. Hmm. Every year I can't wait to get here. But what I wouldn't give to be in a hotel room learning a new role. Oh yes, I understand that. Or a flat in Moscow in a dressing gown with a <laughs> telephone at my elbow and the flood of guests and the footman announcing a flood of guests pouring in, <laughs> invitations pouring in. After the break <laughs> of morning. That part's all right too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here they are, in repose. My greetings, madam. I am overjoyed to see you all settled in. Uh, my wife informs me of your intention to drive the carriage into town today. That's right. <laughs> Imagine! Pray tell, how do you envision that, madam? We are hauling Robbie today. All the men are occupied. Which horses will you desire? Ilya! Which horses? How should I know? What about the carriage horses? The carriage horses! <laughs> Astonishing! They are with the work horses in the field. <laughs> My dear madam, I have the greatest respects for all your talents and would gladly sacrifice 10 years of my life for your idlest whim. <laughs> but I cannot let you have the horses today. Incredible! But if I should need to go to town, what then? You have no conception, madam, what it means to run a farm. Obviously, I grew up here. This is our estate. You work for us. After all I've given the years, this is how I'm treated? Enough, you <laughs> tyrant! I'm going back to Moscow this very day. Order a carriage from the village, where I shall walk to the station! Fine! Don't think of turning me out. Don't think of the sacrifices my family has made, the humiliations of my poor wife and our unmarried daughter. Did I resign? Manage the estate yourself. Yes, this I declare. Aren't her wishes more important than any farm work? Well, come, let's find my sister. We'll fall on our knees and beg her to stay. It will be fun. Wait, let me help you. Not again. This is terrible, just unbelievable. I much prefer my drama in the theater. 
Your husband should be fired, but it will all end with Petra apologizing to him and uh, soothing things over with her sister. I know. These misunderstandings erupt every summer. It's the heat. And I'm so sensitive. If you knew how this upsets me, see, I'm trembling all over. I never endure his uncouth outbursts. Evgeny, my darling, my beloved, take me away with you. Our time is now. Let's end this deception before it's too late. I am a country doctor. I'm not a romantic hero. You refuse me? Are there other women? Oh, I understand. Forgive me, I should know my place. Paulina, no, it's not that. You are married and I... Uh... Yes, you are a doctor and cannot escape adoration. It's my fault, my jealousy. I'm too sensitive. Darling, no, it's... How are things in there? Uh, Madame Arcadna is crying and Petra is having an asthma attack. Oh, goodness. Um, I will go in. <laughs> we will start with chamomile tea. I brought you some flowers. You always seem to be caught in the middle. Funny how that happens. Thank you, Nina. Oh, what pretty flowers. May I see them? Let me see the flowers! Ugh! She wants the book. Oh, ah, there it is. Are you all right? How strange to see such a famous actress weeping over something so trivial. How did it even all happen? It's how they are. I'm often quite confused. And a famous author spending his days fishing. He's the idol of the public. The papers are full of him. His books are translated into foreign languages, and yet he's overjoyed if he catches a few minnows. <sighs> Thought famous people were supposed to be superior and fine, but they just play cards and fly into passions like everybody else, only more so. Yes, my mother, for example. <sighs> Excuse me. Are you alone? I am now. I'm cruel enough to kill this seagull and lay it at your feet. Is that a symbol? What is wrong with you? So shall it be with me, a meaningless end to life. Constantine, you've changed so much, I hardly recognize you. Yes, I have changed since I ceased to recognize you. Your looks are cold. You don't like having me near you. No. It's you, you're so moody lately and you talk so strangely that I'm sorry. I often don't follow you. I mean, this seagull, maybe we're not. All this began when my play was a disaster. Women never forgive failures. What? I burnt the manuscript. No, Constantine. That's the whole thing. Oh, if only you could understand my unhappiness. It's as if I woke up to find the woods scorched and the lake dried up. You say you don't follow me, but what is there to understand? You disliked my play. You suspect my talent. You're beginning to think of me as tiresome and useless. I know. I know how feelings turn. Why? And as if on cue, the real genius striding along like Hamlet. Words, words, words. Your smile, your eyes light up. You once used to look at me that way. Constantine, wait. Takes snuff and drinks vodka. Always wears black. Loved by the school teacher, but, oh, I, hello, uh, excuse me, talking to myself again. Uh, owing to unforeseen developments, it seems that we are leaving today. You and I shall probably never see each other again. And I'm sorry for that. 
I seldom meet pretty young women now. As a result, young women in my books are seldom living beings. I should love to change places with you, if only for an hour, to, to see the world through your eyes and find out what sort of person you are. And I'd like to change places with you. Why? To discover how genius feels. What is it like to be famous? What do you see in the mirror? Oh, <laughs> ah, my goodness. You leave me speechless. Listen, you exaggerate my celebrity or anyway, one never sees fame in the mirror, believe me. But you must read about yourself in newspapers, magazines. Yeah, if the critics praise me, I'm happy. If they condemn me, I'm grumpy for a couple days. Really? No, I remember exactly what they said forever. Oh, what a wonderful world. Oh, I envy you. We're all born to different destinies. Some drag a weary, useless existence behind them, lost, unhappy, while one in a million, yes, you, receives a bold destiny of brilliance and purpose. You are so lucky. I lucky? Huh. You talk of fame and genius and destiny. Those fine words mean as much to me, forgive my saying so, as spun sugar candy, which disappears as you eat it and sickens you by the third bite. But you're very kind, uh, thank you. Your life is a miracle. Oh, there you go again. <sighs> I, I must pack and get back to work. How do you know? You hit that tender spot. Yes, this bold and brilliant miracle. Violent obsessions can lay hold of anyone. Even that dog spends all night howling at the moon. Well, my moon, my obsession is simply right, 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 right. I barely finish one book and then a restless idea howls at me to write another, and then a third, and then a fourth. I'm like a wretched peasant toiling in a factory. I hurtle from one story to the next, unable to stop. What's bold and brilliant? That's no miracle, that's unhinged. Even now, delighted as I am talking to you, I can't forget for an instant that an unfinished story calls me. And also my eye falls on that cloud there. Oh, it's, it's shaped like a grand piano. I make a mental note, use that. I smell heliotrope. I jot down a sickly smell, the color worn by widows. I catch an idea in every sentence of yours, of of mine, and immediately heave those treasures onto my literary war chest, certain that they'll be the key to that next great novel, that immortal character. And when I finally finish working, exhausted, I dash to the theater or go fishing, hoping that I might escape. But no, another idea comes rolling through my brain like a cannonball. My desk calls, the pen beckons, a stack of note paper whispers, write, 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 write. I cannot escape myself, even though I, I know it's consuming my life. I'm a madman. Shouldn't my friends intervene? And I actually begin to think that all this praise and admiration must be a deception that I'm being hoodwinked because they all know I'm crazy and one day they'll grab me from behind and whisk me off to the lunatic asylum. But doesn't your inspiration and the act of creation give you sublime happiness? Yes, <sighs> writing is an immeasurable pleasure for me. I wouldn't even trade the top moment. But no sooner does a book leave the press and fall into my hands than I hate it. 
It's not what I meant at all. I see flaw after flaw and am ready to go jump off the nearest bridge. But then the public reads it and loves it and the sales climb and the critics write and write and write. Oh yes, the new book is so charming, so clever, such an immaculate polish. Oh, it's no Turgenev, of course, or yes, another satisfying read, but he'll never be Tolstoy. To my dying day, they'll say, clever, charming, accomplished, so nice. And when I'm dead, they will carve into my headstone, here lies Trigorin, the celebrated author, not as good as Dostoevsky. <laughs> but you must excuse me. I don't believe that. You get to write. You've just been spoiled by your success. What success have I had, really? I'm never satisfied. As a writer, I do not like myself at all. I'm only made giddy by the fumes of my own brain. And at my best, I hardly know what I'm writing. I love this lake, these trees, the blue heaven. Nature's voice calls to me and awakens the passion in my heart. And I am overcome by an uncontrollable desire to write about it. I am not only a painter of landscapes, I'm a man in a community of an age. And I feel that as a writer, it is my duty to give voice to our collective sorrows, to the past, the future, also uh, of science, of the rights of the unfortunate and, and so forth. Oh, I write on those topics, but my publisher rolls his eyes and the public hounds me, impatient, offended, angry. So I race and dodge like a fox with the hounds on my trail. Life and opportunity narrow before me and I'm back to the gentle love story with captivating local humor and an ironic twist at the end. And I actually come to the conclusion that that's all I'm fit for and all my other attempts ring ridiculously false. Aren't all artists discontented with their work? that drives them to greater art, to new ways of seeing, seeing and expressing our world. If I were a writer, I would devote my life to the service of the Russian people, inspiring them to throw off their common life and rise to the heights I had only touched. I would lead them harnessed to a chariot of fire. A chariot of fire? Am I Agamemnon? Blaze the heights of being a writer or a painter or, an actress, I would endure rejection and disillusionment, even the hatred of friends and the pangs of my own dissatisfaction. But in return, I would strive for and demand glory, resounding artistic glory. Oh, my head is spinning. Boris! Oh. Boris! He's calling me, but I don't want to go. Couldn't you persuade Madame Arcadina to stay? I mean, I can't leave. Such beauty. Do you see that house there on the far shore? Yes. That was my mother's home before she died. I was born there and I've lived all my life by this lake. I know every little island in it. Such enchantment. What happened? A seagull. Constantine shot it. I don't know why. How sad. Well, what are you writing? Just an idea for a, a short story. A young girl grows up by a lake. She loves the lake as the seagulls do and is as happy and free as they are. But one day, a man happens by, sees her, and having nothing better to do, destroys her, just like the seagull. Boris, coming! What is it? We're not going.
a dream. I'm telling you all this because you're an author and maybe you can use it in a book. Frankly, I wouldn't have survived a day if Constantine had shot himself fatally. But he survived, and I'm a survivor too. I'm going to tear this love out of my heart by the blood roots. Will you do that? I'll marry Medvedenko. The school teacher? Yes. I'm not sure that's the solution. If you knew what it is to love year after year without hope, to wait for something that will never come. No, I'm not marrying for love, obviously. But it'll deaden the memories and get me out of this house. Another drink? I'm eating breakfast. Well, it's noon. Don't look at me like that. Women drink more than you think, just usually in secret. I do it openly. <laughs> to your good health. You're easy to talk to. Sorry to see you go. I'm sorry to leave. Then stay. She won't. Constantine's behavior has been so erratic and she blames herself. First, he attempted suicide and now he's going to challenge me to a duel. Why, I can't imagine. He's either completely silent or lecturing everyone about new forms of art as if art weren't expansive enough to accommodate everybody. Jealousy. No. Yearning. That school teacher is so poor and none too clever. But he's honorable and loves me unconditionally. Why? Anyway, goodbye. Remember me kindly and use anything you want. I know you will. And send me your next book, if you haven't forgotten me, and write something in it. Nothing formal, just to Masha, who, for some inexplicable reason, exists. Left or right? Uh, left. No, empty. I was trying to see whether I should become an actress. Only someone would advise me what to do. You cannot give advice for something like that. We'll soon part. Perhaps never to meet again. So I want you to have this little medallion as a remembrance. I had your initials engraved on it. And on this side is the name of one of your books. Days and Nights. How sweet of you. Lovely present. Think of me sometimes. Oh, I'll never forget you. I'll always remember you from that bright day. You remember a, a week ago when we talked the white seagull lay on the ground. The seagull, yes. <laughs> Let me see you alone for two minutes before you go. It's important. How can you manage in Moscow with all your ailments? You get no rest. Who was that? Nina? Yes. She thus interrupted you. I think everything is packed. Days and nights, page 121, lines 11 and 12. I'm absolutely exhausted. You have my books here. You must, somewhere in the library, upper shelf. Page 121. We'll be lonely here without you. I depend on you to keep the place in order. My life in the city is far too chaotic. A little chaos wouldn't hurt me. I'm tired of lying here like an old cigarette butt. I ordered the carriage for one o'clock. If it 
throw a few things in a bag and whirl away together. Petra, I need you to keep an eye on my boy. We're so good together. Besides, the sooner I take Trevorn away, the better. Jealousy. Among other reasons. Your son is a clever young man, stuck in the provinces without money or a position and nothing to do. He feels useless here. Let him run the estates. He's an artist. Can't you see that? Maybe he should join the army. Irina, why not find himself? All right. It's too awkward to have us with you. At least give him some money. What? So he can be a human being. Look at him, wearing the same old tunic for years. He's like a serf pretending the emancipation never happened. And it wouldn't hurt to let him sow a few wild oats. Send him abroad. It wouldn't cost much. Are you insane? All right, I might manage some clothes, a new shirt, yes, but travel? I have no money. Don't laugh, I work in theater, it's all illusion. Very well, darling, you are a noble, generous woman. My own costumes will bankrupt me this I would give him money, but I have him two rubles to rub together. My inheritance, Props up the estate or goes into cattle and beef, and what happens? Cows die. We <laughs> don't get we can't live on honey. You're marvelous and I adore you. So we settle? What a relief. <laughs> Constantine and I remain. Oh, what is it? Oh, I'm just a little dizzy. Petra, dearest, help, help. Petra's ill, get her some water. Shall I find Dr. Dorn? No, I'm all right, just a little lightheaded. I got your attention, didn't it? Don't joke, Petra, my heart's pounding. Finally, a scene about me. It's nothing dangerous, Mother. It happens every now and again. Maybe lie down a bit, Aunt? Yes, and could you get my- The medicine in the small blue bottle? That's the one. I know it, let me help. Say, do you know this riddle? What's on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? I don't be right. Actually, it's a riddle. This is a theater family. Yes, I'll just be here, you know, in case. She gave me a dreadful fright. It's nothing serious. She just needs to be careful. You two are so good together. It's such a relief. Actually, Mother, if we could move back to the city with you, for just another thousand rubles, we could... Oh, no money! I'm an actress, not a banker! I've just settled everything with Petra. Really. It's the only way. At least for now. Very well. Can you change my bandage for me, Mother? You do it so well. The doctor's late. He said he'd be here at nine and it's past noon. Sit down. You look as if you had a turban on. A stranger in the kitchen yesterday asked what nationality you were. You're almost healed. Thank God. You're my beloved. No more silly tricks when I'm gone. Promise me? No, Mother. It was a moment of despair. I lost control. See things clearly now. You remember when you used to work at the State Theater long ago when I was a little boy? They never treated me well there. There was a fight one day outside our rooms in the alley. A poor washerwoman was almost beaten to death. You nursed her till she was well and bathed her children in the wash tubs. Did I? I don't remember that. Two ballet dancers lived across the hallway. They used to come over and drink coffee. I remember those boys. <laughs> they were very religious. This has been nice these last few days. You cared for me so tenderly like you used to. 
other than Aunt Petra, I have no one left. Why? Why do you let yourself be controlled by that man? Now, Constantine, he's a wonderful, noble person, so sensitive. But when he heard I wanted to challenge him to a duel, his nobility retreated like a coward. What nonsense. He has his work and I have rehearsals. A noble personality. We quarrel over him. Meanwhile, he's probably out in the garden laughing at us or else trying to persuade Nina he's a man of genius. You enjoy ridiculing him, but I must ask you not to speak ill of Trigorin in my presence. I have the greatest respect for him. Respect for what? His books are overrated. His writing makes me sick. Every word is fraudulent. Even the ands and the thes. You're envious. He's successful and admired. Frustrated people with big pretensions always tear down the truly gifted. I hope you enjoy the consolation it brings. Gifted? The city is crawling with far more original talent. You too play the game so deftly, you can't even see your slaves to conviction. A whole system. Meanwhile, any time someone new tries to enter the temple of art with a new idea, or yes, a fresh youthful presence, the door is slammed. Well, I refuse to play that game. I refuse. This is just whining decadence again. I like decadence. It means something old and tired is dying. Go back to your circle of flattering admirers and miserable ditchwater plays. I've never acted in a play like that in my life. You couldn't even write the lowest musical farce. You, you idle good for nothing. Miser. Failure. Has been. Never been. You mustn't cry. Oh, now I'm crying. Oh, my darling child, forgive me. I know I'm not a very good mother, but I love you dearly and I'm doing my best, truly. Oh, if only you knew what it is to lose everything. I can't write anymore, mother. It's gone. She doesn't love me. My only hope has deserted me. Oh, my son, I know, I know how it feels, but this too shall pass. When we leave today, it will be better. That's why we're going. There, there, we've made peace, I hope. Truce. Make your peace with him, too. I can't. Don't make me, Mother. I couldn't stand it. Oh, my God, he's like a curse. Ah, uh, good. I'm not too late, huh? Do my bandages. <clears throat> what was that all about? Family matters. Uh oh. Page 121, lines 11 and 12. The carriage will be here soon. If at any time you should have need of my life, come and take it. I hope you're all packed. Yes, yes. Why do I hear a note of sadness that rings my heart? If at any time you should have need of my life, come and take it. Let's stay one more day. No. Why not? Because I know, dearest, what holds you here. Control yourself. Your emotions have intoxicated you. Then you must be sober, too. Look clear-eyed at what's happening. You are capable of self-sacrifice. Release me. Incredible! Are you so deeply infatuated? Again? I am irresistibly impelled towards her. This may be just what I need. <laughs> An obsession with the country girl. How little you know yourself. People sometimes sleepwalk. I feel as if I were asleep and dreaming of her even as I'm speaking to you. I can't help it. 
I'm gripped by the sweetest and most glorious emotion. Let me go. No, no. How can you say such things to me and treat me like this? I'm a human being, an ordinary woman, and I will not play this humiliating role. You are an extraordinary woman. Play that role. Love alone brings happiness on earth. That poetic, enchanting emotion that sweeps away the sorrows of the world. And now, at last, it has come to me. Suddenly, inexplicably unsought, but it insists. And I must obey. A deluded summertime fancy. My dear one, I need you to release me. Am I so old and ugly that you can talk to me like this? Yes, you have lost your senses. My splendid, my glorious friend. My love for you is the last chapter of my life. You are my joy, my light. I could never endure it if you deserted me. I'd go mad. How can you torment me like this? Oh, someone might come in. Let them come. I'm not ashamed of my love, my jewel. In my despair, you long to do the reckless thing, but deep inside, you know it's foolish. Irina, my love. I am yours. You are mine. This face is mine. These eyes are mine. All your being is mine. You're clever, wise, kind, the first of all living writers. You're so fresh, so gentle, so deeply humorous. You bring out every feature of a woman on the landscape in a single line. Your characters live and breathe. Do you think these words are just the incense of flattery? No, I cherish your love. But it's I more than that, my darling. Look into my eyes. What do you see? A deep abiding truth. We know each other as others cannot. I alone know how to treasure you. I alone tell you the truth. We are what lasts, what survives. We belong together. Take me away. Forbid me from ever stirring from your side. Together, we fight our battles inside and out. My heart. Of course, you must stay if you really want to. I'll go and you can follow. Yes, really, why hurry away? No fear, no shame. I have no will. Let's go together now. <laughs> As you wish. What are you writing? A happy expression I heard this morning. A grove of maiden pines. Might be useful. <sighs> so, we're off again. Condemned once more to railway carriages, to opening nights, champagne receptions, scouring early morning newspapers, endless arguments. I am grieved to inform you that your carriage awaits. The time commences, my friends, for the train departs at two five. Would you be so kind, madam, to inquire whether Suldaya, the actor, exists now? And where his company resides? We spent many jolly evenings together. He was inimitable in the stolen mail. A tragedian named Ismailov played in the same company. Oh. No hurry, madam. You still have five minutes. As I recall, they were both portraying conspirators. And one performance, when they were suddenly discovered, instead of saying, we've been duped, Ismailov shouted, we've been pooped. Pooped! <laughs> Thumbs for your journey. They're very sweet. You might want to nibble on something on the way. Oh, you are so kind, Paulina. Goodbye, dearie. 
If things have not been quite as you wished, please forgive us. It's been delightful, delightful. You mustn't cry. <laughs> the servants want to say goodbye to you. I'll walk quickly to the station and see you off there. Goodbye, dears. See you next summer, if we live. <laughs> Don't forget me. Farewell. Here's something for them to share. Drop us a note to cheer us up. Goodbye, sir. Where's Constantine? I must say goodbye to him. My plums. <laughs> Oh, hi, I forgot my hat. I must have left it on the terrace. We're off. I've made my decision. The dice are cast. I'm going to become an actress. I'm leaving my parents and beginning a new life. I'm going, like you, to Moscow. Will we meet there? Go to the Hotel Slavinsky. Let me know as soon as you arrive. I am across the street at Groshonev House. One minute more. My beauty, to think I'll soon see that glorious face again, that beautiful smile, this glorious angelic purity. wild night storming for two days. The waves on the lake are crashing against the dock. The garden's pitch black. You know, that old theater ought to be knocked down. Still there, like a skeleton. The old curtain flapping in the wind. I thought I heard a voice weeping as I walked by last night. Ooh, ghosts. Come home with me, Masha. Not Miss Rain. Masha, the baby needs you. Nonsense, your mother is taking care of him. But three nights, you're his mother. It's getting tiresome. All you talk about are home and baby, home and baby. We miss you. Well, go home if you want to. Your father won't give me a horse. Yes, he will. Just ask. All right. Will you come tomorrow? Yes. Of course, tomorrow. <clears throat> Who's that for, Mother? Constantine. He works late, and with Chagorn coming, we have guests. Let me make the bed. Well, I'm going. Goodbye, Masha. Goodbye, Mother. Better hurry with this weather. No one ever dreamed, Constantine, that you would one day turn into a real author. The magazines pay you well for your stories. You've grown handsome too. Just be a little nicer to my Masha. She's a sweet child. A woman Constantine asks only for kind looks. I ought to know from my own experience. There, see what you've done. He's irritated now. I'm sorry for you, Masha. I don't need your pity. I'm strong. My heart aches for you. I see the way things are and I understand. You see what doesn't exist. Hopeless love is only found in novels, a trifle. All you have to do is hold a tight rein and keep your head clear. Edvanko has been promised a teaching position in another district. When we leave this place, I shall forget it all. A kind of love is like a weed. Rip it out the moment it springs up. How can you... Constantine is playing. That means he's sad. The great thing, Mother, 
promise not to have him continually in sight. When we leave this place, I shall forget it all. A new home, a new life. No, I'm glad to help. <laughs> but as I was saying, six mouths to feed now, and flowers just gone up, 70 kopecks for the large sack. You know the one? Uh, yes, I keep a close eye on. <laughs> Easy for you to make light of it, world traveler. You're rich enough to scatter money to your chickens, if you want to. How much they care for it. Rich, uh, my friend. <laughs> After practicing medicine for over 15 years, during which I could never call my soul my own, I finally succeeded in scraping together enough for a trip to a German spa and the Italian coast. And now I'm back. I'm starting all over again. Your absence was noticed by all your friends. Aren't you going home? I can't find your father to give me a horse. Just disappear forever. Oh, what a lot of changes you've made. The, the sitting room is now a library. Constantine's study. He likes working here. He can step out into the garden and pace up and down whenever he wants to. I'll just tidy these things up. Mother, where's my sister? Gone to the station to meet Trigorin. I must be dangerously ill if you had to send for my sister. <laughs> what a nice business. Dangerously ill. Nobody says anything and you won't even give me any medicine. What shall I prescribe? Chamomile tea? Uh, quinine? <laughs> Don't inflict anything further on me. The moon swims in the sky tonight. I'm going to give Constantine an idea for a story. You call it The Woman Who Wished. <laughs> when I was young, I wished to become an author, no talent. I wished to be a public speaker, championing the rights for the downtrodden. <laughs> My voice couldn't carry to the third row. I wished to marry. Now where is that line of suitors? And I wished to live in the city but apparently I'll be ending my days in the country. You wish to be the chair of the library board, and you are. One doesn't wish for that. It comes of its own accord. Oh, fate, nature has commanded that every life shall have its arc. Ah, the calm and contented philosopher. Fear of death is an animal instinct to be overcome. Hmm. Only those who believe in the afterlife and uh, trembled with unrepented sins can logically fear death. But you, A, don't believe in heaven, and B, haven't committed any sins. <laughs> Unless you count chairing the library board. Oh. <laughs> uh, we are keeping Constantine from his work. Oh. No matter. Doctor. Of all the cities you visited, which did you admire most? Genoa. Why Genoa? The splendid crowds. You would leave your hotel in the evening and throw yourself into the heart of humanity and it would sweep you along without aim or purpose. Their lives would become yours and their soul would flow through yours. You would begin to believe in a great life spirit. Ah! Like in your play, Constantine, that Nina acted in. How is Nina now? Is she well? I believe so. I hear she's led a rather strange life. It's a long story, Doctor. Tell it short. Don't make him. She ran away from home and joined Stragoran. We know that. Ah. She had a child who died. Trigorin tired of her and returned to his former ties. He never broke them, in fact, but always vacillated between the two. So as far as I can tell, her life has been pretty sorrowful. How oh, sad. And her acting career. An even bigger disaster. Uh, she began her debut with the Summer Theater in Moscow, got bad reviews, and after toured some provincial towns. I never let her out of my sight. 
for a year, wherever she went, I followed. She attempted huge, difficult parts, but always tried too hard and overacted. She looked beautiful, of course. Her death scenes were affected. Those were the only moments. Does she have any talent, you know, a, a career? Two different things. I can't say. I believe she's talented. I tried to see her and she refused. So I eventually I came back here. She writes occasionally, never complains, but I can tell she's unhappy, aching for something. One charming odd thing, she always signs her letters, the seagull. The seagull. She's here now. What? Here? She's been here five days. I went to see her, you know, for old time's sake, but couldn't get much out of her. She refused an invitation to dinner. Fine. She's uncomfortable. I saw her too. She was wandering in the fields on the other side of the lake. I asked her why she hadn't been to see us. She promised to come. Really? Unlikely, I say. Even her father and stepmother disowned her. What with the scandal, the affair, and the baby. They put watchmen all around the estate just to keep her away. Nina was always entrancing. It was a pleasure just to look at her. Yes. <laughs> We're back. That's mother's voice. We all grow old and wither, my lady, while you alone, with your elegant spirit and your charming ways, retain the secret of eternal youth. Oh, you're always trying to turn my head, you tiresome old toxin. Ah, dear ones, how good it is to have our circle complete again. Why am I tearing up? What do you do, Petra? Still ill and causing a fuss. Oh, and when the diva, <laughs> when will the charade end? <laughs> and how are you, Masha? You remembered. Did you marry him? And the baby. And you're happy now? Constantine, your mother says that you have forgotten the past and are no longer angry with me. Yes. Oh, uh, here is the magazine that Trigorin brought you. You both have stories in it. Thank you, you're too kind. Uh, all your admirers send their regards. Everyone in Moscow and St. Petersburg is fascinated by you, even though they have no idea who you really are since you only go by the man by the lake. My calling card these days is knowing your true identity. What does he look like? How old is he? Tell us. Well played. You expect to be here long? Uh, no. Back to Moscow the day after tomorrow. Uh, I have an unfinished story to finish and um, I promised a piece to a magazine that I haven't even started yet. You know the feeling. Yes. Uh, this weather is a rough welcome. I may not even be able to go fishing tomorrow. Oh, I've got the ark ready. Of course, I must visit the garden and, and that spot. Do you remember where your play was performed? I remember the script, but I would like to see the spot where the scene was laid. Ah, uh, story? Caught. Well, just inspiration. So good to see my two men together again. Trading secrets, are you? Oh. Father, please let Medvedenko have a horse. He wants to go home. What? The horses have just been to the station. I can't send them out again in this weather. There are other horses. They're impossible. It's all right. I'll walk. Oh dear, on a night like this? Well, it can't be helped. <laughs> Shall we begin a quick round before supper? Yes, well, it's only six miles. Bye. I shouldn't have troubled you all, but 
the baby, you know, goodbye. He's independent. I like him. <laughs> when these long autumn evenings spent, we while away the hours playing games. It's monotonous, but you get used to it. Mark up your own story, Trigorin. Any notes for me? <laughs> no, it seems. Oh, you join us. Uh, you go ahead. Excuse me. Ready? I'll begin. 22. And we're off. Three. Five. Have you put down three? Eight. 81. 10. Oh, don't go so fast. Could you believe it? I'm still dazed by the reception they gave me in car call. 34. Students gave me an ovation. They sent me three baskets of flowers, a wreath, and this pin. Definitely something worthwhile. Fifty. Fifty, did you say? I wore a magnificent mauve dress. I'm no fool when it comes to clothes. Constantine's playing again. The poor boy is sad. He was severely criticized in the papers. A Seventy-seven. You want to attract attention to him. He can't seem to make a consistent success. His writing has an odd, abstract quality that sometimes verges on delirium, and he seems like not all together. His stories keep getting published and written about. Are you bored, Petra? He's asleep. The chair of the library board has adjourned the proceedings. Seven. Ninety. If I lived in a place such as this, on the shores of a lake, I'd never get any writing done. I'd be gone fishing every day. 28. And if I caught a perch or bass, oh, what a bliss it would be. I have great faith in Constantine. He thinks in images, yes, but his stories always touch me deeply. They are full of such vivid color and descriptions, but they never drive forward towards a definite conclusion. They just stop. He doesn't care about that. Your turn. He creates a fine atmosphere, that's true. Are you glad, madam, to have an author for a son? Just imagine. I've never read anything of his. I'm awful. I never have time. Shh. 26. We have something that belongs to you, sir. What is it? You asked me to have this seagull stuff that Constantine shot two years ago. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember. 61. One. The night is restless. Oh, well, shut the door, darling. That wind. 98. Aha! Uh -huh. I win this round. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Bravo, Silva. <laughs> wherever he goes and whatever he does, this man always has good luck. And now it's supper. Our renowned guest hasn't eaten yet today. We can play more later. Come, Constantine, supper. Uh, I don't want anything, Mother. I'm not hungry. As you please. Supper, Petra. Oh, honey. I was dreaming of pickles somehow. Oh. Let me tell you about my reception into your car hall. So you are making a success for yourself as an author. I'm getting published, yes. But stories, not theater. No, that's taken, it seems. Fiction I can thrash out on my own. You know, Doctor, I once wanted to discover new forms of art, but I find myself inexorably pulled towards the familiar. It's what they want, but I struggle. Trigorin has worked out his process so smoothly, you can see his formula at work. The conviction is gradually forcing itself upon me that good literature is not a question of forms at all, but allowing the words to flow freely from your heart without worrying about forms at all. And have you succeeded? No, I'm not true to myself, and the magnet of convention terrifies me. Perhaps just keep writing. 
Go have your supper, doctor. What? Who's there? Oh, Nina! Oh, Nina! Oh, my darling! My beloved has come back! I felt you would come. My heart has been so restless. No, no, no. Someone might come in. I'll put a chair up against the door. Don't be afraid. Oh, Let me look at you. This used to be a sitting room, yes? Have I changed much? You're thinner and your eyes seem haunted. Nina, it's so strange to see you. Why didn't you let me know you were here? You've been here nearly a week. I've been to where you're staying and stood beneath your window. What light through yonder window breaks? I was afraid you'd hate me. I dream every night that you look at me without recognizing me. I've been wandering the shores of the lake every day. I often come near, but I didn't have the courage to knock. It's so quiet and warm in here. You hear the wind whistling outside. Virginia oh, says, happy is the soul who can sit under one's own roof at night with the corner for refuge. I am a seagull, no. What was I saying? Oh yes. Virginia says, and God help all homeless wanderers. Nina. It's all right. I feel better after this. I haven't cried in nearly two years. I went into the garden last night to see if our old theater was still standing, and it is. I wept there for the first time in ages, and my heart grew lighter, and my soul saw more clearly again. See, I'm not crying now. So, you're an author. I'm an actress. We've both been sucked into the whirlpool. My life used to be as happy as a child's. I woke up singing each morning. I loved you and dreamt of fame and what is reality tomorrow morning early. I start for Minsk by train, third class with all the peasants. And at Minsk, a cold room, a dirty theater, but the good citizens will flower me with praise. An unreal life. Why are you going there? I have an engagement through winter. I should go. Nina, I cursed you and hated you and tore up your photograph. And yet I've known every minute of my life that my heart belongs to you forever. To stop loving you is beyond my power. Since the time you left, my life has been almost unendurable. I've called out to you. I've kissed the ground you've walked on. Wherever I look, I see your face and that smile that illuminated the best days of my life. Constantine, don't. I'm alone, unwarmed by any attachment, as cold as if I were out there. Sometimes it lifts when I'm writing, but there's less and less of that these days. Stay. Nina, I beseech you, or else let me go with you. Nina, for God's sakes, what are you doing? I must go. Don't see me off. I'll find my way alone. Is your mother here? Yes. Aunt Petra has been declining, and we think the end is near. Why do you say you kissed the ground I walked on? You should kill me instead. I'm so tired. If only I could rest, rest. I am a seagull. No, no, I'm an actress. <laughs> He's there too. Ah, well, no matter. 
He used to laugh at my dreams so little by little under his sway. I ceased to believe in them too. My acting became coarse. I never knew what to do with my hands. I couldn't move properly or control my voice. You cannot imagine what it's like to know you're acting badly, not to believe in your art at the very moment you're practicing it. I'm a seagull. No, why is it stuck in my head? Oh, remember when you shot that seagull? A man chanced to pass that way and destroyed it because he had nothing better to do, an idea for a short story. No, that's not what I wanted to tell you. Oh yes, theater, I've, I've changed now. I've blotted out that tragedy. I'm a real actress. I act with joy, with exultation. I am intoxicated by it and I am growing toward excellence. Ever since I've been here, I've been walking and walking and thinking and I feel the strength of my spirit growing every day. I know now, I understand at last, Constantine, that for us, whether we write or act, it's not the honor and glory that is important. It is the strength to endure, to survive on our own. We know how to trust ourselves and to trust our calling. You found your way. You know where you're going, but not me. I'm sinking, groping in a chaos, pretending to function, not knowing who or what I'm serving. Without love, my calling is lost to me. I must go. Goodbye. When I'm famous, you must come and see me. Promise. But now it is late. I can hardly stand. Stay. Let me get you something to eat. No, no. I, I must find my way on my own. <laughs> <laughs> she brought him back with her. Of course. Well, what difference does it make? Don't tell Tregoran anything. still love him. I love him even more than I used to. It's just an idea for a short story. I love him. I love him passionately. I love him to despair. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Constantine. Remember how magical the old days were. The gentle, pure life we had. Carry that with you. Mourn it. Celebrate it. That's all I can say. All humans, all beasts, lions and eagles, quails and noble bucks, geese and spiders, silent fish beneath the roiling waves, and creatures invisible to the eye. In a word, life. Odd, this door seems to be stuck. <laughs> what an obstacle course. Oh, put the wine on the table. We'll drink while we play. Sit down, friend. Where are the cards? I'll deal. Yes, you asked me to have it stuck. A seagull. I'll show it to you if I can find it. How strange. I don't remember a thing about it. Oh my goodness. What was that? What was that noise? Uh, nothing at all. Uh, perhaps the servants. <laughs> I'll check. Uh, probably just a bottle of ether blew up. <laughs> Heavens, I was so frightened. That sound reminded me of. And everything went black. There, there, dearie. I'm sure it's nothing. 
The doctor will let us know. Carry on. Just a bottle of ether exploded. Please. Oh. Let's play. Once more, spellbound, I stand before thee. Trigorin, a word. There was an article about America in this magazine that I wanted to ask you about. Take Madame Arcadena away from here at once, immediately. The thing is, Constantine just shot himself. <laughs> 